Greetings, I'm Andy Johnson. I'm the Faculty Association Vice President here at Minnesota State University Mankato. And this short video is to look at some department processes and policies, and this is done to avoid problems. Let's take a look and prevent microaggression, bullying, and harassment, of course. So let's take a look at what the contract says about departments and department chairs. The department shall establish annually, or more frequently as appropriate, through democratic process. Democratic process does not simply mean majority rules, but it means there's a process in play to set up checks and balances. So no single voice or view dominates, and no voice or view is silenced or diminished. A democratic process. Every year, department goals, objectives, policies, and procedures, that's bylaws for how you go about things, and teaching and other work schedules. How your department goes about these things, that shall be established. That means you need to revisit, review, and revise or approve every year, and that should be in your meeting minutes. That's not a suggestion. That is in the IFO contract. That must happen. All department recommendations must be reviewed and approved by the department's faculty. These are recommendations related to the teaching load and schedule, but also tenure and promotion. The department does not make these decisions. The department recommends the dean is ultimately responsible for making the decisions. The dean can override any departmental decision. That's the way it works under the IFO. A lot of problems are created by assuming the chair is an administrative position or a mini dean. The chair is not an administrative position under the IFO contract. It is a representative position. You represent the department. <clears throat> the chair provides academic and administrative coordination. The chair coordinates the activities through a process of regular consultation with all department members. That's called a department meeting. That's what department meeting is. That's what a department meeting is. The chair forwards recommendations of the departments. The chair is a, is a, uh, a representative position related to tenure, promotion, and non-renewal. And again, the department only votes to recommend. The dean makes the ultimate decision, provost and president as well. All right, so what does Appendix E say very clearly? The chair acts on behalf of the department. It's a, a representative position, not an administrative position. Deans often get this uh, confused, get this confused, as well as sometimes provosts and chairs themselves. It is a representative position, not an administrative position. Let's look at the action words. Develops, coordinates, facilitates, orients, supports, Appendix E. Take a look at that. This is what a chair does. It does not administrate, manage, control, supervise, take charge, or make unilateral decisions. Chairs don't do that. I'll say this for the 87th time. It is a representative position, not an administrative position. So let's talk about department processes. And having a good set of processes in place avoids so many problems, including microaggression, bullying, and harassment. That's the checks and balances that we have. Again, every year, this is not a kind of, this is not a suggestion, the department must review and approve policies and procedures, bylaws used for the department. And we should see a vote, a second a motion, a second, and a vote on that in your department meeting minutes. All decisions related to course assignments, loads, are to be come to before are to come before the department for a discussion and a vote. 
and we should see that in your meeting minutes. Decisions aren't made by the chair about uh, course assignments and load. The department has to vote on that. Current decisions should not be made based on old department policies unless that policy has been revisited, voted on, and approved at the beginning of each year. Keep in mind that some faculty are, weren't around when those old policies were made. So every year it has to be uh, reviewed, revised, and approved. The department chair chairs department meetings. That means facilitates. That's the check and balance. You call on people to be recognized so no single voice dominates and no voices are silenced. And Long-term faculty. Under our contract, there is no senior and junior faculty. We should not use that term. There could be long-term and short-term faculty. The PDR process should not, must not be used to manipulate, control, or intimidate. That process, the PDP-PDR process, is a mentoring process used to mentor, to support, if your report is approved each year, by year five, tenure and promotion should not be a mystery. Careful meeting minutes must be taken. Now, meeting minutes is not described in the IFO contract. However, that's your record that these things are approved by the department, that the department has been approving tenure promotion uh, recommendations or course loads and other things. So careful meeting minutes, and it is recommended that administrative assistants take these. This is not uh, in the IFO contract, but this avoids a lot of problems. Agendas should be sent out in advance of the meeting. There should be no mystery. The agenda should give you a sense of the problems to be examined or the decisions to be made or the discussions to be had so people can prepare for them. So they're not seeing these things for the first time. You want people to make good decisions. They need to be fully informed. This is not in the contract, but this is good meetings, uh, ideas. Meetings are shared conversational space. You should have a pie chart in your head. And no single person should be eating all the pie, including the chair, because the chair is facilitating that meeting. That's why Robert's Rules of Orders, and there's many forms of that, or some other process is used for checks and balances and to make sure that no voice or view is silenced. And an effective meeting, this again is not in the IO con IFO contract, 7, 8, and 9, but what are meetings used for? It's used to have discussions that lead to decisions and problem solving. Effective meetings are not used to transmit information. That's what email and memos are used for. It should be used to having discussions about that information. All right, this has just been another look at department processes and policies and the IFO contract.